Hello guys, how are you? Welcome to my channel. In recent years, high piercing of the cartilages portion of pinna has been a trend for insertion of earrings. Also, there are a lot of trauma cases to the ear region. These conditions can lead to a dangerous cosmetically deforming situation which is called perichondritis of pinna. So what is perichondritis of pinna? It is the inflammation of the perichondrium of the pinna. In this condition, the ear lobule is not involved. Why does this perichondritis of pinna happen? It occurs mostly after trauma to the cartilaginous portion of the pinna, which results from laceration of the ear, surgery of the external ear, frostbite, chemical burns, high piercing of the cartilaginous portion of the ear, infection of the hematoma of the pinna, aspiration or incision for drainage of hematoma of pinna. It can also occur due to spread of cellulitis of the external auditory canal. The organisms most commonly involved here are Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Staphylococcus aureus. Other organisms that may be involved are Proteus, Escherichia coli and Streptococcus. So why cosmetic deformity occurs in perichondritis? The pathology is hyperplasia of the dermal layer, thickening of the subcutaneous tissue, intense infiltration with polymorphonuclear leukocyte, thickening of perichondrium, destruction of cartilage by phagocytes, abscess may form between cartilage and the perichondrium. When abscess is formed, the underlying cartilage is deprived from blood supply because cartilage of the pinna gets its blood supply from the overlying perichondrial blood vessel. So when there is abscess in between perichondrium and the cartilage, then the cartilage is deprived of blood supply. So the cartilage gets necrosed here. When the cartilage is necrosed, that is cartilage is destroyed, the pinna becomes deformed, fibrosed, giving rise to a cauliflower appearance. This is called cauliflower ear. So from the pathology, we can sense that there are three stages of perichondritis of pinna. Stage 1, early perichondritis without fluctuant abscess formation. Stage 2 is the stage of fluctuant abscess formation. And stage 3 is fluctuant abscess formation with underlying cartilage necrosis. So how to treat perichondritis? In stage 1, that is mild cases of perichondritis without abscess formation, oral and tropical antibiotic will suffice. But the antibiotic should cover the organism Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Stage 2, that is there is fluctuant abscess formation, then incision and drainage of the abscess is must. But mind it, incision must be given when there is fluctuant abscess formation. Premature incision before development of abscess will further spread the infection and the incision must be given along the natural fold. After incision and drainage, the pus should be sent for culture and sensitivity testing and a broad spectrum antibiotic should be commenced. This antibiotic must cover Pseudomonas aeruginosa and the antibiotic is preferably given in IV form. If the perichondritis is of stage 3, that is, there is fluctuant abscess formation and uh, there is cartilage necrosis, then first we have to drain the abscess, then we have to debride the necrosed cartilage. In this case, the pinna becomes deformed because the cartilaginous framework is lost. There are some other forms of treatment like iron to forces, low dose radiation and EV radiation. In iontophoresis, an electrical field is created to deliver high dose of antibiotic locally through the skin but without piercing the skin and without systemic administration. This is like injection without needle. And low dose radiation works because it has lethal effect on the microorganisms. EV radiation works but it has some side effects. Prevention is better than cure. So how to prevent formation of this cosmetically deforming condition? While piercing the ear, we must be careful that we are not disturbing the cartilaginous portion of the pinna. While doing surgery around the ear, we should avoid trauma 
to the cartilaginous portion of the ear and tight bandage of the ear must be avoided. Hematoma of the auricle must be drained promptly because if the hematoma is not promptly drained, infection may lead to abscess formation and underlying cartilage destruction. In case of burn injury of the pina, broad spectrum antibiotic covering the gram negative organisms must be initiated. There is another condition in which the patient may present with perichondritis of pina, but he also has fever and some other cartilage involvement of the body like septal cartilage, tracheal cartilage, laryngeal cartilage, costal cartilage. And the patient may have uh, some ocular involvement like iritis, scleritis, keratitis and some patient may also have vasculitis. This is called relapsing polychondritis. It is an autoimmune condition. I hope you have enjoyed today's session. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.